Hello everybody, Sandre here. Uh, this is my uh, second time responding to uh, uh, Computing Forever, also known as Dave Cullen, um, on his uh, claims regarding climate change. Uh, if you haven't seen the first time I did that, uh, you will find a link to the video below in the description. Uh, I do suggest you watch that video. Um, and uh, this time he's talking about uh, different things though than the things that he mentioned in the last video. Uh, now he's gonna point out what seems uh, to be a contradiction that everywhere apparently is warming twice as fast as everywhere else, uh, which, you know, of course isn't, you know, technically possible. And so uh, this, this is one of those times where, you know, if you don't understand the science behind this, I actually do. Uh, see how this might seem, uh, you know, like it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but as you're gonna see, 95% uh, of the sources that he cites in, in, in this video and, and he shows uh, are not scientific sources at all. Uh, it's uh, news, uh, news blogs, it's news sites. Uh, some of them are at best scientific blogs, but that's pretty much it. There are a few scientific scienti uh, scientific uh, p papers uh, or articles uh, from actual scientific sources in this video that he shows. Uh, but again, th this is one of those times where if you don't understand the science of climate change, if, if you don't understand uh, the, the, the chemistry of the atmosphere, if, if you don't understand the physics of uh, thermodynamics and, and, and the atmosphere, um, and, and, and if you don't understand uh, how statistics work, uh, some of the things that he brings up in this video is gonna seem like a slam dunk. It's gonna seem like, yeah, this totally disproves uh, climate change and you shouldn't take it seriously. But as I'm gonna point out, it's 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 really simple. Like it's it's not at all what what he thinks it shows. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's begin video was originally uploaded to my BitChute channel as a BitChute exclusive, but a few people have pointed out that it's a pretty important video and should probably be seen by as many people as possible, which is why I'm going to re-upload it now to my YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe over on BitChute for more exclusive content. Enjoy the video. Guys, apologies for my crappy lighting. I'm making this video rather impromptu because I found something truly hilarious about the climate change agenda, which was which has been exposed by a lady by the name of Natalia Matteo in a series of tweets. And this was also covered over on Ace of Spades HQ. They have an article covering this and they've given their two cents on her, uh, her discovery in this media bias. Yeah, let, let's uh, let's go through this. Uh, let's go through this uh, this blog and and see what's up. Yeah, as as you can see, um, not not exactly uh, not exactly neutral at all. It's uh, this is uh, this is uh, not at all a, a trustworthy uh, website. They have an agenda, and that agenda is that climate change is bunk, and um, yeah. They're trying to prove that it is. Of course, they're failing miserably, uh, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, I just want you to keep in mind that this is the kind of site that he thinks is more trustworthy than, let's say, nature. Kind of tells you a little bit about uh, the, the state of computing forever. And so their article is worth worth reading, and I'll include, that link, I'll include it links below, and also her Twitter thread. So what she's found is <laughs> it's going to make you smile, but it's quite uh, it's quite interesting just how blatantly stupid and ridiculous and absurd the mainstream media's climate change <clears throat> agenda really is. Because what it seems that they've they've been doing for quite a while is <laughs> basically making the case. Numerous uh, publications have been making the case for a long while that basically, as she says in her tweets, uh, the entire planet is warming at twice the rate as the rest of the planet, right? And she sarcastically says, please disregard all my previous tweets debunking climate change. I'm now a believer. And so there's an article, and this is by uh, cbc.ca, Canada warming at twice the global rate, leaked report finds. So uh, then there's an article from the local.se, which is a Swedish publication. So right. Uh, and see what I'm talking about here. Like, this is going to be the majority of the sources that he brings up in his video. Um, again, very, very few sources from actual scientific uh, sources. Um... Or, or institutions. Uh, these are almost entirely from ordinary news sites. And, and we all know how trustworthy they are when it comes to science, right? Um, no, look. 
news sites like uh, the NBC uh, or or uh, CNN or the local or whatever. These are news sites that are more appropriate if you want to know what's if you want to know what's going on in in contemporary society or in politics and whatever. They're they're actually more trustworthy when when it become when it comes to that stuff. But when it comes to reporting scientific facts, the mainstream media is notoriously bad. And not only is it bad, but they also in a way have an an invested interest in sensationalizing everything regarding whatever. Uh, they, I mean, how, how often don't you uh, turn on, uh, you know, a news show uh, on CNN, let's say, and, and you find that, uh, oh, we, we have the latest reports on, on this diet, and in reality, uh, you know, it's not that scientists have reported anything new, it's just that some quack has reported something new, and the CNN doesn't know... Uh, who's the quack or and and who's the scientist or they just don't really care because they just want the views uh, The same thing with their uh, with their web publications, you know, they want clicks They want you to stay on the website. They want you to click on other headlines. So you watch their ads and whatever uh, That's the whole point that that's their business model So they try to sensationalize everything. Okay, so when it comes to you know, whatever health uh, or, or medicine, or, uh, or uh, the climate, they're gonna find anything, you know, sometimes very old scientific articles that they will, you know, cling on to and, and try to sensationalize or whatever. So, look, if you want to know what's, what's scientifically valid or not, don't go to the local. Don't go to CNN.com. Don't go to... Uh, to uh, uh, MSNBC or whatever, D don't go to these sites, okay? They do exaggerate a lot when it comes to climate change, and th that's that's just as much of a problem, actually, uh, as the deniers. H here's the thing, it it's, it's like I've said before on my channel, you know, I've made a video responding to AOC, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, uh, because she made the claim that uh, tornadoes are, you know, becoming more common and whatever, when there's really no data to, to confirm that, you know. Um, so I made a response to her. If, if you want to watch that response, you're, you're going to find the link uh, in the description. But just like you have deniers, like Computing Forever or Dave Cullen, um, you're, you're, you have people who exaggerate as well. And let me just make this clear. Uh, climate change is real. And yeah, it, humans are to blame for the, 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 the sharp rise in, in global temperature. It, it is our, our fault. It is because we pump greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Uh, you know, deal the fuck with it. That's just the truth. Now, does that mean that climate change is going to lead to an apocalypse? Fuck no. No, it, it's, it's not going to. Look, when it comes to climate change, it's serious, okay? It will cost a ridiculous amount of money. In terms of productivity lost, uh, you know, crops not giving yield, uh, and 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 other you know problems that are going to arise, like diseases moving further north and south on, on the different hemispheres, um, and you know uh, pests like locusts may become more common and more extreme weather events and whatever. All of this is going to cost a shitload of money and be a huge damage to to property. Uh, not to mention that there, you know, people will die thanks to climate change. Uh, you know, the the estimates are, um, you know, most of them give, you know, a couple of hundreds of millions of people who are gonna die, and those deaths being, you know, directly uh, attributable to climate change. Uh, I think the worst prognosis I ever saw was something along the lines of a billion people dying, maybe something like that. Uh, so yeah, it, it's a very serious event. You know, this will be one of our... Well, actually, this will be our greatest test as a species ever. Climate change is something we need to take seriously, and it is going to be a huge problem. It's not going to be an apocalypse, however, and I, I cannot stress this enough. When you go so far as to say that we're all going to fucking die because the polar ice caps are going to melt, uh, no. I mean, you know, if you stay in the areas that are going to be, you know, uh, uh, taken over by the sea as the sea level rises, uh, sure, you know, then, you know, if you're dumb, you're, you're, you're gonna die. Um, 
and some people, you know, who are poor and can't, you know, mobilize fast enough, they're, they're going to be caught in, in all kinds of extreme weather events and, and die, of course. Uh, but we as a species, no, we, we will survive and we will find ways to cope. It's just we can avoid all of this if we want to and if we work together. Uh, and we should because it is going to be a disaster. It's going to be a d disaster on a global level. It's not going to be quite a fucking apocalypse, however, and I, I just I cannot fucking stress that enough. So just like you have deniers like uh, Dave here, you have the problem of people who exaggerate. And these people, <laughs> you know, when, when these fucking news sites write these hyperbolic articles, they're not helping. They're, they're, they're really not. Sweden's temperature is rising more than twice as fast as the global average, as it says there. I don't load the page. That's interesting. I mean, everywhere is, is warming. How can this make sense? Can't make sense. It can't make sense. Um, <laughs> Actually, it can, and I'm, I'm going to get to this uh, later on, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let the video play now for a while and just show all of these examples. L let him show you all of these examples, and uh, then when I give my explanation as to why you're seeing all of these headlines, uh, you know, except for the fact that it's hyper uh, hyperbole, um, like I mentioned before, um, you know, it's going to make sense. It, it, it is going to make sense, but just, just wait for it. <laughs> now, I just Googled. Ireland warming twice as fast. And sure enough, the top hit from 2007, the Irish Times says, Ireland warming twice as fast as rest of world, right? Um, it says, Ireland warming twice as fast as rest of world report finds. I did this for Australia. Again, that's not a scientific source. Yeah, you can do this for any random country. It's like a little game you can play. Australia is heating up faster than the rest of the world. Uh, she, she finds one here at QZ.com. Russia's, Russia's warming faster than the rest of the Not a scientific of source. And where, what was that about? So, fast one and seeing disease, drought, and forest fires as a result. Um, she also finds the Arctic. Arctic is warming twice as fast as world average. NPR. Not a scientific source. Tibet is warming at twice global average. Newscientist.com. Mountains in general. Mount yeah, th that was actually one of the few ones in this video, and, and, and you're going to see that. That was one of the few scientific sources. Mountains are just mountains, right? Mountains are warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. You know, it's almost like this is just complete bullshit. There's lots of ways in which human beings can damage the environment, right? We can we can destroy, we can knock down forests, we can damage the seas, we can spill oil everywhere, we landfill, plastics, we can burn all sorts of bullshit in the atmosphere. This is true, right? We can damage, you know, habitats for wildlife. However, are we actually ushering in the end of the human race and life on Earth because we are contributing to global temperatures to such a degree that we will make the planet uninhabitable for life. I don't believe so. Uh, no, we, we are not bringing forth an apocalyptic scenario. We're just not. And I, I cannot stress this enough. See, the, the problem with, uh, you know, uh, fucking fear mongers like AOC and, and Al Gore and whatever, when they start making these uh, hyperbolic, ridiculous claims of, you know, uh, fire and brimstone and the end of the fucking world and shit, um, is that they, they give people like Dave here ammunition. And it's it's really sad because, look, you guys, okay, uh, to, to you who are not regular viewers of his channel, uh, you see the title of my, my channel, okay? Sandre the Teacher. You know why I'm called that? Because I'm actually a chemistry teacher, okay? I, I, I work part-time as a chemistry teacher. Not only that, I'm studying chemistry at the university, okay? So I, I, I both work in, in teaching about science and I'm also studying science, all right? So, uh, and I, I've taken, uh, uh, you know, a couple of courses actually on environmental chemistry and I do understand the chemistry of, of the atmosphere. Um, now, that being said, my, my knowledge about the climate is not as advanced as an actual climatologist, of course. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I do understand the, the mechanisms at play here, you know. Uh, I do understand thermodynamics, I do understand the chemistry and, 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 and the chemical makeup of our atmosphere, and I do understand what happens when you have an input of energy from a, 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 a solar body like our sun. Um, and I do understand what happens when you start, uh, you know, basically messing about with the balance uh, in terms of the, the, the levels of the each uh, greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Um, but no, look, climate change, like I said before, it's serious. We need to deal with it, otherwise people will die. It's, it's not, it's not going to be the majority of the population, though. Okay, We're talking, most projections I've seen have said somewhere around like a couple of hundreds of millions of people. Still, though, a, a shitload of people, and I, I don't want people to die, 
okay? We, we should do something about this. It, it's not going to be the end of the world, though. C cannot stress this enough. Well, I don't believe there's good evidence for that. And anyone who comes up with a 97% consensus, well, firstly, that's a narrative. But the consensus thing, that's not how science works. Science doesn't go... Well, isn't that convenient? Isn't that convenient, Computing Forever? Isn't that just fucking convenient? Because uh, now, all of a sudden, when it comes to this topic, oh, we shouldn't care about, you know, consensus. We we should care about the evidence. Just, just the evidence. Do you know why the vast majority of scientists, and not just scientists, but the vast majority of climatologists believe that climate change is a big fucking deal and that we are, you know, causing it? Because they have looked at the evidence. That's how science works, okay? You're right. Science doesn't work by, by consensus, okay? It, it really doesn't. But consensus is almost always formed around the body of evidence. So even though you shouldn't believe in climate change just because the vast majority of scientists do, uh, you should, however, consider that why do the vast majority of scientists believe in climate change? Well, because there's a shitload of evidence behind it. It's happening, whether you like it or not. It's, it's that fucking simple. Now, here's the thing, Dave. Nothing's stopping you looking at the evidence yourself, okay? Nothing's stopping you picking up, like, uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a physics for dummies and a chemistry for dummies book. I'm, I'm serious. Look, you just need to know rudimentary physics. I'm talking like high school physics and high school chemistry. That's all you need to know in order to understand the, the fundamental mechanisms of climate change. I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding. It's that simple. Okay? And the evidence is overwhelming. Like, again, nothing's stopping you from looking at the evidence yourself. It's, it's available to the public. Always has been, always will be. That's how science works, okay? Yet you don't look at the evidence in this video. That's, that's, that's awfully convenient. The media keeps spinning all the time. Let's have a look at some other findings. Um, Arctic warming at twice the rate of the rest of the planet. And that was from UPI.com. China. China is heating up twice as fast as the, as the rest of the world. This is a joke. Again, QZ.com. Alaska. Alaska warming twice as fast and as global average. Here's one from a Korean website, hanaiko.kr. Korean Peninsula is warming at a speed faster than global average. That was from 2009. Again, the, the years are all over the place. I mean, some of these articles are more recent than others. Uh, Britain warming fast. You almost had a moment of, of, uh, of awareness there, but I'm, I'm going to go more into that later. But um, yeah, l l like I said, I'm, I'm going to give you all, you know, a perfectly valid explanation as to why these headlines seem to contradict each other. But they're actually not, but you know, it's going to make sense. And, and it's surprisingly simple. Faster than average. Britain's climate warming. Uh, Britain's climate is warming faster than the global average, quoted in the latest IPCC report, according to climate experts. That was from 2013. Um, now, what's interesting is Ace of Spades HQ chimed in on this uh, on her on her findings on Twitter. And so it says at the start of the article, they say, I assume they do this so they can target one country's po one country's population with propaganda that country X is warming at twice the rate of the rest of the Earth, as well as targeting country Y and country Z with the same basic story. The scam works so long as people don't see they're running this game with every country. As country X. It's true. I mean, we have access to the internet. We can view articles um, from other countries. So we can clearly see that the same narrative is being spun everywhere. The, the same trick is being played upon people. And they said, one begins to suspect that climate scientists have made up a scheme of dozens of adjustments they have granted themselves to make to the actual data, enabling them to tweak any temperature down and any other temperature up. This allows them to claim that every year is the hottest year on record, <laughs> dialing up this year's numbers and dialing down the numbers of previous years, and to claim that every country on Earth is <coughs> twice the rate of every other country on Earth. Spain. Spain won Wow. Okay, okay. Uh, I, again, this is, this is also one of the few uh, scientific uh, sources that he actually cites here. Uh, but he, here's the thing. Now, now, now I'm going to give you that explanation as to why all of these headlines seem to contradict each other, but actually don't. Okay? One thing that some of you who are observant might have noticed throughout this video is that all of the different studies that are, you know, referenced to or cited by these articles, as well as the articles themselves, are all from different years. You know, some of them are from 2010, some are, some are from 2013, some are from 2015, some are from 2017, yada, yada, yada. So why does that matter? Well, because the nation that is warming at the fastest rate is usually not the same year per year. It shifts. Okay, one year, one nation, let's say pff, Spain is going to be the one that's going to notice the most drastic increase in temperature, uh, you know, compared to the global average um, in, in the world. Okay, 
The other year, maybe that's going to be Brazil instead. All right? This is not static. It changes on a yearly basis. And that is one of the obvious explanations as to why this doesn't seem to make sense. But actually it does. You know, it's, it's perfectly reasonable uh, for different nations every year to be the ones that are warming at the fastest rate. It's not going to be static. Now, granted, you will notice that the nations that are going to warm the, the, the most are going to be uh, in the subtropics as well as in the temperate zone because that's where you know it's predicted that you're going to see the biggest increase in, in temperature uh, you, you're, you're, you're not going to see too much uh, of, of a warming actually in, in the tropics it's mostly going to happen in the in the subtropics and especially in the temperate zone but yeah it, it, it differs on a yearly basis okay there's no grand conspiracy here it's just every different year it's a different country that is experiencing a warmer, faster than the rest of the world. You know, it's it, it really is that simple. Spain warming faster than rest of Northern Hemisphere study. And that was from fizz.org. And that was uh, from back in 2010. It just keeps going. Exactly. 2010. It's not going to be the same in 2012 or another year. Finland. Finland is warming faster than the rest of the world. In Habitat.com. This on in the Irish media, whenever we have an exceptional summer, you know, our, our summers are usually pretty meh here in Ireland. We get a few weeks of sunshine and, and some nice temperatures occasionally. But if we ever get an exceptional summer, like we did in 2018, for example, we got a really warm summer. Um, but Dave, I thought that all of these claims of, you know, unusual heat and whatever heat waves and whatnot it's 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 all lies are we not hmm very odd you know then they say oh you know this, this is climate change right this is climate change and this could be the new norm and in that year in 2018 it was quite a different year uh weather wise to the year that we got this year which is that we had a, a lot of high winds we had a lot of storms at the beginning of the year then we had a big snow for us, uh, the biggest snow we had since 1982, and then we had an exceptionally good summer. That was last. Ah, yes, ah, yes, the, the, the classic argument. Well, we had a cold summer, and therefore climate change can't be real. Actually, there's this, uh, I, I can't remember if he was a senator or a congressman, but I think back in 2015, um, he was a Republican, I remember that much, but it, it was either a senator or a congressman back in 2015, I believe, uh, who argued in Congress or in Senate that climate change can't be real because, uh, well, there was snow outside, <laughs> outside of the building and he made a little uh, snowball and he brought the snowball back into, into the building and showed everyone and he even threw it, I believe. Uh, I'm going to show the clip here. Of, uh, national attention in, in, in case we have forgotten because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record I asked the chair you know what this is it's a snowball and that's just from outside here so it's very very cold out very unseasonal so here Mr. President catch this mm -hmm. um, yeah th that's that's the level of the argument here like but there's snow outside, so it can't get warmer. Checkmate. I, I love the little smile that he has towards the end of the clip. Like, yeah, I sure showed them. My god, this is so dumb. Yeah, no, dude. You're not going to get away with this argument just like I'm not going to let anyone else get away with it. No, just because you have a cold fucking winter, it doesn't mean that there is no climate change, okay? It's a global phenomena. It happens globally you see an increase in temperature globally it's not going to be the same every single year for every for every single nation some nations are going to experience a cold winter even though the average temperature is going up that's just how it is i mean dude you're, you're a programmer okay you have to understand statistics to some degree right this is just how statistics work the average is simply descriptive it's not decisive okay last year and so 
they they start to spin this narrative that all the climate experts come out of the woodwork. And when it's exceptionally cold, they go, this could be the new norm. Because you know, things are getting colder. Cause... You will not find any serious scientists saying that. Or even if you do, it's, it's a fucking minority. I, honestly, no. This is what you will see in the media because they want to sensationalize everything. But no, you, you're, you're, you're not going to find a scientific community saying this. It's, you know, global warming. And then in the summertime, they go, oh, this could be the new norm. You know, we could be getting this every year now. This is the new norm. Really harsh winters, really warm summers. And yet this year, eh, pretty mediocre, pretty average summer, pretty average winter, fairly mild weather in general. Um, and that's about it. And when you get right down to it, it's only about one thing, which is tax. That's it. It's just, what, what's the solution? Is well, carbon taxes. Or well, gradually, you know, people are going to have to start changing what they eat. Insects. Uh, <laughs> or All right, I'm, I'm really fucking sick and tired of this fucking non-argument. And let me just add this as well. I have no problem with carbon taxes, but politicians need to stop relying on them solely. S a simple tax on carbon alone is not going to accomplish anything, okay? You need to do something with the money you get as revenue, with the tax money you get as reven revenue, okay? You need to actually do something about it, all right? You need to invest that money into actual, you know, clean energy sources, even nuclear, okay? Nuclear is a cleaner energy source by far than uh, than fossils, okay? It is. I don't like nuclear energy. Uh, people say it's the future. It's not. It has its own problems. Uh, for instance, you know, you have a bunch of radioactive waste. We still have no long-term plan for how to store that stuff. It's dangerous for thousands upon thousands of years. Um, it's, it's really nasty stuff. And the, the risks are small, but it is there. You, you could have another Chernobyl, no matter how safe you make your plant. So nuclear power plants, they are ridiculously safe. But when things go wrong, they go very wrong. Okay? Uh, but anyway, this video is not about that. But no, look, even nuclear is preferable to, to fossils. And I do realize that we need nuclear at least for the next 30 years or so. So un until you can get all of your energy from uh, renewables, yeah, we, we need nuclear. It's, it's that simple. So invest that money into renewables as well as nuclear. But politicians don't do that. And, and so I think, you know, Computing Forever here has a valid point when it comes to his irritation with politicians. Like, why have this tax on carbon when you're not going to do anything with the tax money? I agree. You need to do something. All right. But uh, again... This has nothing to do with the validity of climate change. It just means that politicians are dumb or incompetent. I mean, that's nothing new under the sun, you know. Every, everyone pretty much knows this already. Um, also, when it comes to this idea of eating insects, no, serious scientists, the vast majority of them, are not suggesting that you need to eat bugs, okay? Almost no one is saying that you need to stop eating meat. Okay, you can still eat your meat. What they're saying, though, is that we need to stop eating the same type of meat. Okay, uh, maybe instead of, you know, eating so much, you know, bovine, maybe you can eat a bit more pork or chicken or fish. That's better for the atmosphere, okay? Um, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's, tr it's true. Uh, when cows graze on anything other than grass, okay, when they get a corn-based diet, which cows, you know, that are bred for slaughter are fed on because it's cheap um they produce a lot of methane gas in their digestive system and they fart that shit out yeah it, it sounds ridiculous i know but it's true cows fart methane methane is a 25 times more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide okay so even just a little bit of methane in the atmosphere makes a big difference by far so yeah, car, you know, cows farting methane gas into the atmosphere is a problem, okay? So all I've seen from serious scientists on, on, on you know, your, your eating habits and the climate, all they're saying is maybe you should eat a bit less cow, okay? Maybe you should eat more pork or, 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 uh, or chicken or, um, or, uh, or, or fish. That's cleaner for the environment. Almost no one is seriously suggesting that we need to eat insects in the future, okay? 
just just knock that shit out and honestly when it comes to meat eating i think it's pretty much a non-problem at this point because in about 10 years time i'm sure we're going to be able to grow meat in a laboratory and all of these problems with greenhouse gases are pretty much going to be you know no more when it comes to meat eating so really no eat your fucking hot dog eat, eat your fucking chicken i i don't care most scientists really don't care it's really not that big of a fucking problem it's probably going to be solved anyway with technology in a couple of years with lab-grown meat so whatever they're gonna have to start giving up their cars or they're gonna have to start using public transport more or using electric cars and... i mean look you, you you said it yourself towards the end there use your electric car as long as the energy uh as long as the electricity that you need to uh charge your car comes from renewable sources or nuclear power um yeah no th there's no problem but there's absolutely absolutely no problem you can drive your car as much as you want whatever no no greenhouse emittance whatsoever i i don't see what the problem is pay more taxes more taxes more taxes and change you know their electricity usage in their homes or whatever the hell it is and then we have to uh, switch to solar solar's not gonna be enough to power our cities and towns uh neither the fuck are you saying the fuck are you saying you scientifically illiterate fucking loser Jesus fucking Christ. All right. Here's the thing. There's a lot of energy in sunlight. Like a ridiculous amount of energy. So, no. Already today, uh, solar is efficient enough to be, be used uh, to um, uh, provide power for a lot of parts of the world. In fact, if we wanted to power all of the world... We would only need to use about 5% of the total surface area of the Saharan Desert. Uh, we, we would only have to put solar panels covering about 5% of the, of the surface of the Sahara uh, to cover all uh, energy expenses of our civilization. Yes, all of planet Earth and all of its populations could get all of their energy from simply putting solar panels in Sahara and covering about 5% of the surface area of Sahara. Now, this was a number that I heard, you know, maybe like a ten, 10 years ago or something, so... And solar is even more efficient now, so maybe it, now it's down to like 3% of the surface area of the Sahara. Now, of course, we can't do that because that would be an obvious flaw in security for any nation i mean honestly it would be it, it would be so easy for any terrorists to, to to sabotage a nation's energy supply by just bombing an area of the solar um fields uh but um still the, the principle is sound okay in the u.s i believe about what is it 18 percent or something of the of the area is desert you only need to cover a small percentage of that area with solar panels and that could cover all of the energy expenses of the US. There are several nations around the world, especially in the tropics as well as in the subtropics. If they really wanted to, they could get all of their energy already now from solar, wind, wave power, whatever, dams. Definitely, no, no, no question about it. It's the temperate zones where solar isn't as viable, but even in the summertime, you could still get power from solar. It still makes sense in the summertime. And uh, in the wintertime, ju just don't use the solar panels. It's, it's really not that complicated, okay? In winter, you, you, you can instead uh, rely on uh, dams, uh, as well as wind power, and even nuclear power, all right? The point is, solar panels, at the very least, are a very good additive to make sure that you get even more of your energy from a renewable source.